Alright then you guys, I've got a massive, massive confession to make and I'm really, really, really sorry. Now, riddle me this. Is this Tudor or is this Bavarian? I don't even know. Wooden beams and the white plaster everywhere because that's just so stereotypically Tudor. Yes, that's what she said. Behave. The gift shop turned out way better than I thought it was going to. It's the trademark of the series. It's getting a little bit difficult to present a ride photo uh, booth in a very different way. Uh, I feel like I just use the same template for everything. Oh, I got it so horribly wrong. Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to episode number 7 of Chacholandia. And here we are in the UK building a Cedar Fair Park that's going to rival all of the other Merlin parks that we have here in the UK. So thank you for coming along if you're new to the channel and thank you for all of your support over the week off that I've just had. Um, and of course thank you for coming to hang out with me here on a Sunday morning on the premiere if you are. And if you're watching this after the premiere then of course you're most welcome here too. So this is what we were doing in the uh, previous episode then. We were building our a Eurofighter that's sitting in this Tudor area um, so we detailed all of the buildings and we've detailed all of the layout and the queue lines and everything so that's all done so if you haven't checked out that episode then that's of course the, the previous previous episode this is Chacholandia so far um, of course I was starting to get to a point where we need to do a bit of a tour to show you around so we're going to start building up to those kinds of episodes but we need to continue the expansion now I wonder what's that going to be so I'm not going to lie about this one to make friends. This one was a struggle. Creator's block really, really kicked in. And yeah, many, many hours later and many positions, we finally got a GCI at the front of the park. Uh, but just to give you a bit of an insight, this was in multiple places of the park. I mean, it was originally down here. Then it was at the back of Plumple Pop. And then it was over here. And I thought, no, I just need to build a GCI in an empty space and just see where it fits. And so here we go. We're at the front of the park. And actually, I'm quite happy with the quite happy with the layout. So let's talk GCIs then. I thought I was going to bring some of the top tips that I would normally do a little bit further forward in the episode, so that we're talking through the actual design and the layout at the same time. So I'm going to start down here, and with an interesting fact about the the Millennium Flyer trains. So they are actually made up of three different uh, parts, three different sections, regardless to the length of the train. You have something called a chain dog, something called a rollback, and something called a tail a uh, trail coach. And so they are in each row, right? So you'd have something like a, a chain dog as car one, and then the rollback as car two, and a trail as car three. And then they can be interchangeable, right? So that's not set in stone, but that's just how, that, how they work. If you have more than one train, you can't then swap the cars around each train. So all of the trains on, uh, all of the cars on train one, all of the cars on train two, and all of the cars on train three, they need to belong to train one, train two, and train three. You can't swap them around. And the purpose for each one is that you've got a chain dog. That's the thing that in engages with the chain lift, right? So that's the thing that has the, the pointy sticky doughty thing, uh, which is the technical term. And it engages with the chain and that's what takes it up. You then have a separate one that's responsible for the anti-rollback mechanism. So that's the thing that stops it from rolling back down the chain lift. And then you have a trailing coach and that's the one that has nothing on it. It's just a blank, a blank coach that just trails behind. And you tend to find that you have them... Uh, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, and then so on and so forth. Where you have uh, a train that's not a multiple of three, you tend to have either this uh, front car, like a zero car as they call it, or a back car that has something slightly different added to it. But that's essentially how the trains how the trains are made up, right? So with this train, with this coaster, then we're going to come out of the station and we're coming round into almost what is the signature unbanked. Uh, turn into a lift hill and they do this so that you can reduce wear and tear on the on the chain lift right so that's just how that works and the chain lift itself by the way has mechanisms at the bottom at the top and in the middle and that then prevents the uh, the chain lift from stretching too much but they do stretch so just like any other train uh, chain on a, on a coaster they stretch and you tend to find that the chains on GCIs stretch more than others and they tend to get replaced when the stretch is beyond 2%. So when the chain is 2% longer than it was originally when you installed it. Um, again, that differs in countries and that differs around the world, right? So that 2% isn't an actual set figure, but that's pretty much like how that, how that works. So we're coming up our normal uh, chain lift then. So... Uh, 32 degrees on this one because they are capable of doing quite a lot of uh, angle on this on these coasters and then we come down into the signature first 
first drop, right? So that's always that curved first drop. And then we're going to come into an airtime hill and then round the bend. We come into a second airtime hill here and then into a stall turn um, where you're flying literally round at almost 90 degrees because of the speed that you're going. And then we come into a snake pass. Now, GCIs do this amazingly. So, GCIs are famously really low to the ground, like airtime air time machines. And they're so versatile that you can throw them around. So, you tend to find that at the peak of every turn, they're actually, that's where the crest of, where a crest of the hill is. So, there's one here, uh, there's one here, and then there's one here. And they do snake turns, like, perfectly really 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 well um and then we come into a turnaround and then into a double airtime hill that's also like really typical of a gci this double airtime hill and then it comes round into uh another snake turn and i've done this purposely i wanted to have an a, like an exaggerated snake turn so there's the exaggerated snake turn and then it comes back into another airtime hill uh, and then into a pass and then down into a double down because we haven't got one on here yet and what woody is complete without a double down <laughs> and then into a turnaround and then into the brake run and so i've also put the maintenance shed uh, here as well and for this one i've actually gone for a non-transfer track uh, so you typically you'd have like a transfer track side by side but because we're actually so tight with space we've gone for this kind and this is the closest i'm going to get this is a bit of a trade-off to what you can achieve in Planet Coaster, right? So this would, this wouldn't look like this. This would be a little bit better in a, in real life, but it's just supposed to be representing the fact that these are uh, dual direction, and you can reverse the train into the maintenance shed uh, rather than having to use a, a, a transfer track that goes on there, right? So that's just what I wanted to uh, achieve on this one. So there's a few things that I'm going to need to do um, in advance of the next update and that's this custom supporting because as you can see on here this is not supported very very well. So I do need to um, to go ahead and do that. Theme for this one is going to be western uh, so we're going to bring the path around uh, this way. And then I've just laid out all of the queue and where I want all of that right now. So uh, we've got fast pass that will be on this one. And then the queue is going to come around here. And I just wanted to go for that saw style uh, queue line where it's out and back. But you've got a couple of bits where it juts off to do uh, cattle penning and stuff so that you can open them if, if the park is busy. So with that in mind, I'm going to go and prepare the custom supports. And we're going to talk about that next. All right, so let's talk custom supporting of GCIs. And guys, I'm just gonna let you know, I'm gonna wanna make this one quick because I've had my vaccine, the side effects started to kick in, and I don't know if I'm about to be in for a really rough ride. So <laughs> let's get this over and done with so I can go to bed. <laughs> so custom supporting on this one. We already know that the supporting game for the wooden coasters are okay. But they're not perfect. Uh, so we do need to do a little bit of work on here. But this is where, as a creator, I'm taking the creative decision to work with the game as much as possible. But not fight with it. Because I could quite easily custom support the entire thing. I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're just accenting the additional custom supports that are needed for GCI. And I'm going to talk through all of these in a moment. And this is the, this is the main batch, right? So the main principle that, you, that I'm going for here uh, is that all of the supports need to touch another support in some capacity. Uh, so I'm just actually going to break from tradition and go into top tips mode rather than uh, normal mode. So this is the support structure that we've got here. So uh, GCIs will always support wherever there's any kind of lateral movement going on in the uh, track itself. So this includes uh, straight pieces of track just before or after a bend or a hill because obviously the, the track would potentially sway. So you put some extra supports in along this way. Um, and of course there's going to be around bends and everything. Now they use this like, I don't know what the official term is um but it's almost like this diagonal diamond structure so you have a couple of layers that go up along the uh, the outside well that's the <laughs> that's a roof uh, <laughs> come on now uh, <laughs> so you have a couple of uh yeah so these diamonds are oh, distracted now look what you've done uh so yeah you've got all of these that go up the perimeter of the uh, the actual bend itself and you might have three or four different layers and they go up in layers each one is then connected to each other uh, and they're connected on the horizontal and the vertical plane and the xyz axes uh, and then you also get this bit in the middle where you've got a diagonal uh, support as well now this these diagonal uh, bracing supports are actually there to transfer all of the 
lateral forces and everything that are being exerted on this bend down into the structure and it helps to diffuse that so if you've got um, some forces that are hitting here for example uh, it's going going to get diffused in potentially four ways there's uh, it gets diffused this way this way straight down and then down the diagonal and then down so it's just dampens all of those forces that you get um, with, a, with an actual GCI itself so I've done that all around the um, all around the actual course as well wherever I can fit them in now places like this it's a little bit difficult with the supports that you get given in game to complete this whole effect so it does look a little bit shoddy in places I mean I, I will admit that there's some trade-offs that are going on here um, and I don't really know if you would find one of those supports here um, you possibly should you possibly could so I might actually put one in here now I'm looking at it so watch this base I'll, I'll correct that uh, so yeah then you've also got the points of crossover so wherever you've got a bit where the track goes underneath or over the top there's an extra bit of supporting that you need so wherever you've got something that goes underneath there will always be some kind of steel girder that's supported by the wooden pillars and that again is just in the process or in the position to diffuse all of the forces and the stresses that are on the the track above it so for this for example you wouldn't need necessarily uh, supports or struts going down this way um, you can just use the metal girders on the horizontal and that's absolutely fine but for this one you've actually got three quick succession ones so I've actually just put in some steels that go on the vertical so that it just holds some of that stress into the ground but over where is one uh, over here for example you just need to have them uh, placed on the horizontal it does look a bit rubbish in game but if you look at the likes of the wicker man at Alton Towers you can actually see that in practice and they are literally just uh, steel beams that are in, inside this wood structure there's no actual steel that surrounds it this is just enough to defuse and support all of the supports where there isn't one that goes down so the idea is that the stresses would come down this uh, column here would be diffused by the steel and it sends it down this way and that's when then your extra ones then pick up all of that uh, all of that slack so this ends up being actually quite secure uh, now there's another thing to talk about You'll see that in the middle here, there are some planks and there are some uh, beams and everything. And that's because uh, you put these in whenever the track, whenever there's some kind of crossover. So that if anything falls from the track, it doesn't fall down and it doesn't damage the track underneath it. Now, it's not for purposes of hitting trains and stuff because you're never really going to have a train that's crossing over. But you do have them so that if anything does fall off, it doesn't damage the track and then it doesn't cause any kind of derailing and stuff. So uh, that's why these are here. Now, I'm taking the design design decision to not put the middle strats in. It's like when you do watch some POVs of modern GCIs, you'll see that there is actually a middle two strats that go on. Now, they are actually there to aid walkthroughs. So the engineers and everything would typically check the track and do a walk around. And if they're not going to use the catwalks, they actually use the middle struts. So that's what those are actually there for. But I'm taking the design decision not to do that because Planet Coaster doesn't play nicely when it comes to conflict and, and everything. So I'm just leaving it as it is. There are GCIs out there that don't use those middle middle struts and so I'm just going to going to run with that. But yeah, so this is what this is for. It's it's just a, it's just designed to dampen the uh, dampen all of the forces and to stop things from falling down. I don't know if I'm going to use any kind of sound tunnels on this one. Uh, it feels like I probably should, uh, but like I say, I'm going to need to see how I feel after this vaccine because I'm starting to struggle. I'm starting to wane really, really badly. Um, but anyway, let's talk you through the other stuff that I've done here then. So the station, I absolutely love the Mystic Timber station. Like, it's just so beautifully open and minimal and it just looks awesome. So I've just stolen it. Uh, I've made it a Chacho version. I'm stealing somebody else's work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, these idea of you, your cross struts uh, being your support beams, they are just perfect for this situation because it creates this really nice open space. Lots of lights in the middle. The operator booth is uh, is all kitted out already. Um, and then underneath here, I've just started the process of building the photo Photoshop uh, on the right hand side here. Of course, this is where the photos are going to be. And then just a games unit that's going to be sitting on the uh, on the other side here as well. So that's kind of like where I'm going with this one. And then outside the back here where the uh, where the exit is, I've just added in the disabled lift. Uh, so we've got some disabled access coming in here. So you'd come through the shop, you'd uh, enter the, the wheelchair lift here and it goes up and into the station. And like the invert where we said that you wouldn't be able to have any disabled guests, this is very different. And then uh, you've got the exit... 
as I said, coming down here, your stairs, no more than 16 risers. This is, this is more than 16 risers, let's not tell anybody. Uh, that's thanks to the game. Um, but in real life, this wouldn't be more than 16 risers. And then, of course, you've got the, the refuge area in the middle. So that's why this is that kind of shape. And then you've got the uh, entrance area for the maintenance bit coming in here. Um, and then, of course, you've got the maintenance shed. I'm just doing some light touches in here. So you, we've got a walkway, we've got a, a cage ladder, and we've just got some clutter and the electric... I'll actually show you, shall I? Um, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Uh, so we've got the electric cables, uh, the electric cabinets, and just some clutter and everything in here just to represent the uh, maintenance shed. And then, and then, <laughs> and then, uh, this all happened. So I wanted to start to get a feel for the area um, and how this is going to be pulled together. So I definitely wanted a screaming swing in here. I wasn't going to put this in. Um, not this episode, but I actually decided I was going to. It felt like the area needed to come to life a bit more for me to make sense of the station and everything. So, Scream and Swing's gone in. The queue line's gone in. I'll walk, you, I'll walk you through that in the final update. And I've just started to place down the external buildings. And like I said, I don't know how much of this I'm going to get done because I'm going to go straight to bed after recording this. And I don't know how long I'm going to be there for. <laughs> so... Um, We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I just wanted an information point and some uh, cash machines. I wanted a bit of a, a gift shop and uh, just some toilets and some food units up here. I've started to put some of the shaping to the building so I sort of I remember how I want this area to be. And then this one's going to be a, a very Silver Dollar City inspired uh, building because I liked the shape of the building and I like how it's pulled together. So I just wanted to have a row of... A row of um, food units and everything but of course I need to be aware that I've already got a gift shop here and food units here so this shouldn't be too overkill but then at the same time this is the front of the park and this is where you tend to find most of your facilities so um that's where we're at at the moment. Like I say, I'm going to bed uh, so I can sleep off this vaccine. And hopefully I should have something to show you for a final reveal <laughs> as long as I don't pass out for days on end. Let's see what happens. 48 hours, guys. I was floored for 48 hours. But it's okay. I feel much better than I did. Uh, I'm now first vaccinated and all of that sort of stuff. So it's all good. Uh, I've managed to also do quite a lot of catching up. I've got some stuff that I want to do in the next episode. Because uh, the Western theme is going to continue on down. Uh, so I'm just going to roll some stuff over. But welcome to Tombstone. So we've got Alexander Valentine to thank for this one. Um, so this is named after a city in Arizona. Which is most famous for the gunfight at the OK Corral. Uh, so, Alexander, thank you so much for this name. Tombstone is yours. Uh, you do also provide a bit of a backstory with this one, and it was suggested that the whole station was going to be themed around a church. Unfortunately, the name came through after I'd already themed the station, right? So, what I have done, though, is paid homage to your idea, um, and there, there are gravestones and everything around, so thanks to the spooky pack for this one. Um, so, yeah, this is now the, the ride area. Of course, we're going to be developing and everything around this back area here, so this is where we're going to focus our attentions, but you can see just how much has changed, right? So, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, let's go in the station. I didn't really show you this last time. So the station in here, it's just your typical station setup that I always do. It's got your baggage hold, it's got your exit signs and all of the theme makers toolkit pass and everything that we've done. I've added in the ride uh, operatives as well and also the push points and all of that sort of stuff. You know, the typical stuff that you would expect. I have also done inside the op booth as well. So you can see that there's all of the paperwork and stuff that you would see. I don't know if you can see it through the window. Um... And just, yeah, it's just come together quite nicely as a station, right? I really like how this is how this has turned out. This back area here as well has also turned out really, really nicely. Uh, I have put some barriers and stuff down here just to try and stop them from walking through, but they seem to still be doing it, and I don't really know why. I don't know if it's because the path isn't wide enough here, so the game is overriding my ability to do anything fun. Uh, so... Yeah, so we're just, uh, we've got this area here where you come down the stairs into this courtyard and then you come into the gift shop. Exit via the gift shop, please. So we've got all of the stuff in here that you'd expect to find. And I've cluttered this out as much as possible, right? Because it's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be like this really tight enclosed space that's underneath the station. They're just monetizing as much as they can because they're greedy. Monetize and greed. Uh, so, yeah, I've just put all of the stuff out uh, in here. It's all your typical stuff that you've seen me do in all of the other gift shops before. So, uh, we're just going along. We're going along with that idea, right? Um, and then from the outside, I have just put lots of wood down. Booms, as you can imagine. <laughs> so, I wanted to colour some of the wood the same colour as the wood that's used on the... Uh, on the actual coaster itself. Because it sort of makes sense. It just brings that whole theme all the way through. 
So I've just used some panels and everything just to create uh, slightly higher fencing because of course you're raised up here so you want it to be sort of almost at shoulder height so that people don't fall down. Remember we're not building a murder park uh, as clickbaity as that would be. So <laughs> people do. Um, and then the queue line as well, I've also just continued the wood down this way. And then we've got a different fence style uh, that's going on here. So I wanted to mix up the styles. Uh, and I'm mixing up with the hard uh, fence, like as in a hard border, and also this slat border. I use these in Fundy. I really liked using them. They're actually really quite versatile. They look really good. Um, and then I've also just put all of the concrete down in the queue as well. So... Um, just to, like you know why I do that is to hide all of the gaps in the in the actual path area as well so it just looks like one consistent queue line of course it's got all of its bins and its benches and I've dotted around loads of western stuff I didn't want to go too heavy heavy with the theming on this one um, and you can hear the ride music so that sort of creates a little bit of ambience and atmosphere so yeah I didn't want to go too heavy on this one because it was just I just wanted it to be light touch so you've got all the gravestones and everything the idea of it being the okay corral and the shootout um, and this is where they would have buried people, like hidden away from the town and stuff. So you're kind of going through that. But I didn't want to go too extreme because then it just became spooky theme rather than Western theme. So I think I've just about tipped off that tipped off that balance quite nicely. Uh, and then we come down this way. Of course, we've got ride signs. Um, and then I just wanted this open plaza feel. So I wanted to have a bit of a sight line back to... Um, the invert that we've got over there and uh, the sun giant and then of course you've got the screaming swing that's in front of you here and this idea of a western town so I had to um, almost use a bit of transition technique with this one because this western building here looks far more modern than these ones here and that's because the buildings here are modern it's a very clean very modern look so i sort of had to use a transition and going right going from modern into western into full western so as a result we've got rodeos here that's looking very clean and very modern very fresh um, I, this is this is the one that's inspired by silver dollar city's entrance plaza um, i didn't actually copy it i just used a lot of it to to like get a bit of inspiration um especially the balconies and this uh stone cladding and everything that's on here i actually like how this has turned out um it looks very sort of like it's rustic it looks how i wanted it to uh, wanted it to be and then inside of course i've done the inside as well i've kept with that modern feeling because of course we're coming from the entrance so we're trying to transition from modern to western so i just put loads of neons and stuff in here and then of course you've got the, the rodeos ride uh, not ride rodeos restaurant logo here and then i just put some ceiling decorations in as well just to break up that ceiling of course this area needed lighting as well so we'll do the nighttime tour in the extras episode and also, by the way, in the extras episode, I'm going to show you where the original version of this wooden coaster was and just show you how awful it was <laughs> and how bad my creative block was that I ended up deleting it. Uh, but I've kept it in place so I can show you for the extras. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we come out of this way. There's nothing really particularly special in here. It's just a it's just a restaurant, right? You've just got seats and benches and stuff around. So I just wanted to keep that uh, consistent. And then we've got Screaming Swing, which is now called Tomahawk. Uh, and it's looking really good in its pride of place actually um i've taken a lot of inspiration from the queue line here from vortex at thought park in the sense that it goes through loads of trees and it's a bit windy i didn't want to use cattle pen in this one because of course i could have done um i've got enough space to do to do quite a lot of cattle penning here but this ride doesn't really get many queues and i thought let's just do something slightly different so you would have seen it <laughs> i've buried it in trees uh, <laughs> so you can't actually see it that scared me um so yeah, I've just put the queue through all of the foliage and everything down this way, just to give it something a little bit more different, a little bit different that you go through, right? And then we're going to come to the bank house. So I've, ta I've taken some inspiration from the Gardaland Western buildings on this one. So you've got the bank building, which has got two cash machines and fast passes. I've put the fast passes opposite the Western, uh, the Western coaster, opposite. To uh, tombstone because it's got fast pass right so apparently the guest ai decides that it's going to buy a fast pass if the queue's too long so i thought hey let's just try and milk some money out of our guests down here uh yeah so we do also don't have cash machines very readily available so i thought i needed to actually make a point of having cash machines somewhere um these roof pieces these are tmtk they are absolutely awesome i forgot that i actually had them and it wasn't until i was looking for a roof piece that was like corrugated iron um, i was like oh my god that's brilliant so I've used those in here. 
And then we come around this way and we've got an, an actual gift shop. So unlike the ride shop that we've got here, this is just solely doing gifts. But this is actually functional in game. Um, so we've got the, the three stalls in here. But then I've just kitted it out with everything else that you'd expect to find in a gift shop. And again, it's supposed to be a really small, cramped uh, gift shop because we've got two gift shops in this area. So you don't want to overdo the, the idea of having gift shops. I just wanted them to be in here. But because the other one's not functional, I wanted one that was. And that's this one right here. Uh, so, TMTK letters and beams and all sorts of stuff going on in here. I do need to do a tidy up job on these trees. Um, I didn't realise they were poking through. Uh, so, I'll, I'll do a tidy up job on that some other time. Um, and then, over here, we have our uh, chicken and drinks. So, I just wanted, again, this to be functional. And the area didn't have any toilets. So, we've now got toilets. And yes, of course, who doesn't decorate the inside of their toilets? Uh, not me. So <laughs> this one's really cramped though. Um, and I haven't put a barrier along this one because the path isn't wide enough to actually allow guests in. So when the park is full, your guests are going to clip through here and everything. Uh, but of course, it's filled out in, in exactly the same way that all of my other toilets are. You know, you've got the toilet doors. Um, well, you know what a toilet looks like. You're not silly. Uh, <laughs> so it's just all done on the inside. Uh, I've added in just a seating area outside here, which is going to interact with some stuff that's going to be going on here. And of course, we've got an extra ride in here. I just I haven't had the time to do it. Unfortunately, I lost quite a lot of time being bedridden. So... Please forgive me. Um, I will deal this, deal with this in the next episode. And then, of course, next episode, we're going to be uh, dealing with this area up here as well. Um, I've got some stuff coming. It's, spoiler alert, it's not going to be a coaster. We've, we've done coasters to death. It's going to be something else. Um, and so this is what the view now looks like coming from the entrance area. Um, no, that's underneath the ground. So there's the Chacholandia um, fountain that we did. And then we've got rodeos just in front, we've got the gift shop, and now you just see it poking through uh, the trees. And then, of course, we've got the screaming swing over this way. And then there's the area for Tombstone. I like how this how this sightline has developed. Um, like I say, given I had so much creative block to start with, I'm actually really chuffed with, with how this has ended up being. Um, and I think the flooring as well, because it's TMTK and it's that usual technique, um, did you see how slide then? Uh, slide across the floor. Uh, because it's the TMTK and it just creates one plaza effect, it just it looks makes it look so much uh, so much better and so much more open. And then of course in the ride area I've just put like other stuff and everything. So I'm going to pop some glamour shots in here uh, so that you can see this in a little bit better detail. So thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. Of course, I really appreciate all of your support. Thanks for hanging out with me at the premiere. Um, and <laughs> thanks for bearing with me through my downtime. Uh, so I'm going to be working, like I say, on the back area of the park for the next episode. Um, so stay tuned for that one. And of course, extras will be uh, as planned on a Wednesday now, not a Thursday. So thank you, guys. Uh, of course, until we speak again, please look after yourselves. Take care and let's go for a ride. <laughs>